today hope you guys are doing excellent yes so we want to announce our two giveaway winners for our last entry uh, the 225 gift cards is gonna be the first giveaway winner is Yahaira Janet Hernandez and the other is Hennessy Caldera so go ahead and DM us on Instagram or Facebook wherever um, so we can go ahead and send you the gift card or any other form of payment that you prefer go ahead and keep watching to see me on the news go Good morning, G-Fam. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful morning so far. Uh, right now, I'm headed over to an interview where I will be featured on the news in highlight of Foster Care Awareness Month. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a former foster youth, um, and right now, I'm going to be interviewed um, in regards of how foster youth have been affected during the during this crisis um, of the coronavirus so I'm gonna be taking you guys with me hopefully they're gonna let me record while they're interviewing me um, so you guys can see and be a part of it all but stay tuned I'm a little nervous honestly <laughs> we'll see how it goes That fund now has more than $11 million in it raised by the community since mid-March. All of the money stays local, given to nonprofits like Just In Time, which helps foster youth transition into adulthood. Just In Time really stepped in into my life at a time where I really needed help. At just 20 years old, Stephanie Gomez has been through a lot in her young life. She entered foster care when she was 12. At 18, she graduated from the system, unsure of what the future might hold. Most youth, you know, they have the support of their family to depend on. Like, even when they turn 18, they're still living at home. But for us, it's kind of like, what do we do next? Or where are we even supposed to be living next? That's until Just In Time stepped in, a local nonprofit dedicated to helping others like Stephanie figure out their way in the world. As they come out of the foster care system, they don't have the resources or the relationships that help them become self-sufficient and have a sense of well-being. Executive Director Don Wells says that need has been amplified by the COVID-19 pandemic. Like so many these days, some of the people they help are also without jobs, food, or the ability to pay bills. Thankfully, Just In Time is one of several San Diego nonprofits who received a $50,000 grant from the San Diego COVID-19 Community Response Fund run by the San Diego Foundation. It's remarkable. Vice President of Development Brian Zumbano says in less than eight weeks, the fund has grown to well over $11 million. So far, $7 million has been handed out to an estimated 60 nonprofits. They handle everything from food giveaways to providing laptops for kids. The fund is even extended to no interest loans for small businesses and organizations who will no doubt need assistance for some time. We're at the start of something here, not the end. As for Stephanie, she's grateful for the support. How do you feel about finals? It's helped her continue her education as well as pay bills since she's now out of work, putting a local face on the global movement, Giving Tuesday Now. I would be struggling. If you'd like to donate to the Community Response Fund or are part of an organization that wants to apply for a grant or loan, that information is on our website. Just go to cbstate.com, click on the help button. Back to you. Thanks, Shannon. Service to the turn 18, 18 to 26. And as they come out of the foster care system, they don't have the resources or the relationships that help them become self-sufficient and have a sense of well-being. And so we were really founded as our name implies, to be there just in time, help them overcome unexpected obstacles and emergencies. And so that has just been amplified during this time of COVID-19. Stephanie, how old are you? Um, 20 years old. Okay. Um, how has Just In Time helped you? Just In Time has helped me through so many situations. Uh, when I first entered the program was when I was first moving into my independent living home, when I got my first apartment. So with the resources that Just In Time provided, I was able to apply for the My First Home program where they helped us, sorry, where they helped supply me with everything necessary from like furniture to just cleaning supplies and everything. So you live on your own? I have lived on my own, I'm recently married. 
that this organization helped you kind of move from that to more independent living. Where do you think you'd be without this organization? I would be struggling, you know. Um, a lot of uh, foster youth, we lack resources and support, so Just In Time really stepped in into my life at a time where I really needed help, and they were able to not only help me financially, but also emotionally, and have really been just like a family to me, and you know, with all the volunteers and stuff, I've been able to build a lot of connections that have impacted me positively to this day. I think um, a line that we used in the last interview was that oftentimes when foster youth turn 18, it's like the rug gets taken out from under them and then they're just lost, nowhere to go. Did you feel that way yourself when you were 18 and kind of graduated out of the foster programs? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like most youth, you know, they have the support of their family to depend on, like, even when they turn 18, they're still living at home, but for us, it's kind of like, what do we do next, or where are we even supposed to be living next? So, uh, just in time really steps in as that um, support system to just be able to provide any resources and support that we need. Okay. Um, and the pandemic has impacted us all. Uh, we talk about a lot of uncertainty, sadness, isolation. Have you been feeling any of those things? during this pandemic? Yeah, yes, of course. Um, I feel like, you know, just in general, a lot of foster youth, we already deal with so much uncertainty, not knowing, like, what's going to happen next, or, like you mentioned, the rug being pulled out from under us. It can happen whatever at whatever time. So uh, when this crisis and pandemic hit, it was kind of like more uh, issues and, and concerns, like, piled up on top of each other. We already deal with um, financial hardships. So on top of that, it was kind of like, uh, some of us have been like laid off from our jobs, so um, sorry. No, it's okay. I don't know if we're. I, yeah, I think that I think you kind of um, pick it up there. I mean, you guys are just as impacted as anyone else. I mean, some of you have lost your jobs, and you're going through those same emotions of just not knowing what's next. Um, how crucial is it to have just in time? stay open during a time like this when other places are forced to close? Yeah, like I was mentioning, sometimes it's kind of hard to have family depend on already being in the system um, and for a variety of different reasons. So just in time has really been that family support and just opened up their doors even during this time for us to come in and, and seek any resources and help that we need. Okay. And um, if you don't mind me asking, how long were you in the foster youth program? I have been in the foster care program for about eight years now. Okay. And you're 20? I am 20. Okay. Cool. Um, is there anything else you want to say about Just In Time or um, just the community's uh, support for you guys? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you from the bottom of our heart um, on behalf of all the foster youth that, you know, we really wouldn't uh, be where we at today without them and the support that is provided with like the volunteers and the staff and you know the help and support that we've received financially and emotionally um, has really helped us uh, grow and become stronger individuals. Okay, great. I'm going to have you stay seated because um, I think we're going to get a few shots. On our website, just go to cbsa.com, click on the help button. Back to you. Let me get this too. Thank you. All right, welcome to Just in Time. Let me Hello. give you an all exclusive tour. Ooh. This is our front desk. Hand sanitizer available before you sign in. Mm -hmm. um, if you come through this way, we have a quiet room down there where our participants come in, relax, okay. read a book, maybe take a quick nap between work or school. Nice. Here's our fridge. Uh, we keep frozen food here and snacks available for people coming in. Okay. Cool things about our bathrooms, they're gender neutral and one of them has a shower. So people can come in, we provide hygiene kits and towels. And back here is where we usually have our workshops when we're in usual workshop season, <laughs> teaching people, uh, you know, job skills and healthy relationships. This is where everyone meets. This is our hub. 
um, yeah, with expert facilitators to come through. Yes, thank you Virgo for the tour. Mm -hmm, no problem. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm leaving now, but um, the interview went great. I was really nervous, but I think it went better than expected. They're going to go ahead and send me the um, video link copy later so I can go ahead and add it to the video. Um, but I'm super happy for you guys uh, to be joining me on this journey. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I am in the foster care system. And I usually do events like this often where um, I just like share my story or my experience and I'm either like interviewed or something so I'll be if you guys like this go ahead and give this a thumbs up so I can be sharing like events that I have like this um, with you guys all the time but other than that I hope you guys are staying safe and being productive and we'll see you guys in our next video go on.